Amy. And today we are bringing you awesome information about what to do when your kids get sick. So we've got three awesome strategies for that. Um, but first of all, let's just talk about the mindset behind it. So in our house, when our kids get sick, who stresses out the most? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, totally, right? So why is that? Why do you why do you feel like it's a bigger issue for you than it is for me? Probably because I'm with them all day long and that's yeah. kind of my primary role. So I have a tendency to feel responsible for making sure that their health is yeah, and, and the reality is is that we all have our weaknesses, right? Like, so for me, it's not a weakness. I don't necessarily get taken out that easy when the kids get sick. Amy, that's one of the areas, right? Like yeah. yesterday, we got that beautiful phone call from the accountant telling us that, you know, tax season's over, we have this massive payment to make. Amy could care less. Amy's like, who cares? It's not well, a big she deal, She called right? and said it was gonna be, it was, she had some bad news for me. I was like, oh my gosh, like what, I was, I, and then she said that we owed some money for taxes, and I was like, oh, that's it. Yeah, that's it. She's oh, like, oh, that's who cares, there. right? Yeah, whereas for me, right, that's maybe a bigger issue. Um, she calls up, Amy says, the kids are sick. I'm like, oh, who cares? They'll heal, right? Not who cares, but like, the, you know, the reality is they're going to heal. But for Amy, if the kids are sick, it's a bigger deal, okay. right? So all of us, right, part of this navigating through family thing is, is all of us have our strengths, all of us have our areas of greater concern, lesser concern, whatever it is. And so when kids are under the weather, that's typically a bigger deal for you than it yes. is for Mia. Yeah. Me, Amy gets more concerned with it than I do. Um, but together, we got to navigate it because we're married and that's what married people do is they stick together <laughs> and they, they get through it, right? So we're going to talk about three yeah. strategies that we employ always in our household in terms of trying to get our kids to heal. The first thing you got to understand is, is that the, co the most common thing that people do when their kids get sick and under the weather is they let their kids get away with everything. You know, the kids start whining, they start dictating what they want, you feel bad for them, and right away the next thing you know is you're giving your kid, you know, ice cream and popsicles and these things that aren't really good for them to help them heal. And it's a hard battle sure. because you want your child to be comfortable, so I get it. We've been down that same path with you, we're in the same trenches, so no judgment there because it is a difficult thing to navigate, but this is where we need to put on our, our big mom pants and uh, make sure that we stay yeah. straight on the course. Right, and just understanding too that you know what's best for them, so you gotta walk them through that and help them understand that. It might not be easy, but you gotta do it. So first strategy in terms of getting your kids to heal fastest, doesn't matter what they have, they could have um, you know, uh, earache, stomach ache, yeah. any of the sore above. throat, colds, coughs, all that sort of stuff. I got to close this down. I just got the low battery warning. <laughs> um, so what what you you got to understand is the whole entire process is literally about getting the body to heal itself faster. You right. know, this this whole theory of germs make people sick is completely flawed. Germs are a contributor to people getting sick. But really weak people and weak immune systems allow germs a home to live in that then create sickness and disease. So right. the germ theory is at, at very best incomplete, right? And what we need to look at is the host theory, which is this theory of a weak environment allows that to happen. So every single thing that we do in our life from a, a health perspective is always about trying to strengthen the host so that the germs don't have a house that they want to live in anymore. Same thing, you know, cancer doesn't just randomly strike people. Cancer makes a home in a mm -hmm. susceptible, weak host. So in terms of that, all these strategies aren't about attacking disease, they're about building the body up so that you can go ahead and get stronger and healthier and your family can be, can be strong. So number one thing you gotta recognize is the way the body works is the nerve system controls everything, right? So your brain has to recognize if there's a throat infection there and then it has to attack the, the um, bacteria or whatever it is that's trying to get in there. The way that that process happens is across something called your nerve system. We now know from a scientific perspective that the most influential thing on the immune system is the nerve system. In fact, you know, scientists now use words like, you know, the, the neuroimmunomodulatory effect and all of these things that talk about how the immune system is regulated by the nerve system. So the first thing we do with all of our kids when they get under the weather is we check their spine and we create a positive impact on their nerve system, which in our world is called the chiropractic adjustment. Studies show that 
kids and adults who are under chiropractic care have higher functioning levels in their immune system. Things like IgA levels are as much as 139% higher when you've been looking after the health of your spine and nerve system compared to when you haven't. So, so some people are probably asking like, what is IgA? So just give a quick rundown. So why is yeah. that important? So IgA is what's called immunoglobulin A and that is a super active part of how your body works through any type of disease. You know, it's part of the immune system process of fighting things off. In fact, a mother's milk, the most important part of a mother's milk uh, is the very beginning part when that comes out and they actually have something inside of there called colostrum and a huge component of colostrum is literally IgA, immunoglobulin A. So it's very, very strong um, aspect of how an immu immune system was, um, was, was working inside the body. So in terms of that, uh, get your kids to be looking after their spine and nerve system, get them to see a chiropractor, that's number one. So first thing we always do, not necessarily as a treatment for sickness, but in terms of keeping them strong and healthy. It's always all about keeping the body strong and healthy so that it's not a susceptible host so for these things. So you can prevent. 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 But in the case that, for whatever reason, we're running around too much, too much stress, too much sugar, too much lack of sleep, we end up sick, this is where these steps come in. Yeah, so okay. we don't ever sit there, never in our life have we said like, oh, the kids went to school and now they're sick because they went to school, right? We always know there was something that happened that allowed their body to weaken to take that on. Yeah. So Amy was talking about nutrition, sleep, all the rest of it. So strategy number one is get that nerve system activated. Strategy number two is cut sugar out, right? Sugar yeah. should be a small part of your life to begin with. And when somebody's under the weather, you gotta get sugar out immediately. People think sugar just means lollipops and candy, but really where else do we find sugar? In a lot of fruits. Yep. And kids love fruit, and, and that's a, a tough one when your child is sick and they don't wanna eat. Um, How about most so flour products? Flour products, yep. Any of your grains, any of your, your car refined carbohydrates are basically AKA sugar. Yeah. So we want to cut it back on those things. So eat, but just remember, even in the fruits, like bananas and, and mangoes, which my kids love, are higher in sugar. So when they're sick, they don't get those ones. Yeah. Um, they'll get more berries and Granny Smith apples are great ones with a little bit of almond butter um, is a great way for protein too. Sure. So when your kids are sick and they got a sore throat and you're giving them a, a you know, um, what's it called, a popsicle because you're trying to be nice, that's not helping them. The yeah. sugar in that is feeding that bacteria and when you take sugar into your body, it immediately causes your immune system to suppress. So you're gonna struggle to have a high functioning immune system if your sugar levels are up, right. okay? Strategy number two is when does the body heal? It heals when it's what? Resting, Resting right? Resting. So this is part of the issue is, is that we drive these kids on huge, on schedules that are going so hard. As parents, people are trying to get to work in the morning and so you know they're driving the kids on these schedules that are more coordinated with their work life than they are for the kids needing to heal. So rest is super key in terms of healing. Right. And so we kind of couple that with, we say rest and hydrate, right? So keeping your body really well hydrated. Why is that For sure. important? Why is it? Because when you're hydrating, your body is flushing out the toxins and that's what you want. You want your body to be able to be functioning optimally, which means making sure that it's hydrated so that you can continually be flushing out all of the toxins and wastes that are going on in, in your body, especially when you're sick. And when you're resting, that's when kids are growing and that's also when they're healing. So when they're under the weather, those are two important uh, functions why you need to make sure that they're getting enough rest. So those naps during the day are critical or getting them to bed early. And that, getting them to bed at an early time is, is super important and, you know, for kids because during that, that early night time is when a lot of the growth actually occurs. Yeah. And so uh, the third thing that we would talk about there would be certain things that you could do to support your immune system, right? So we're not really big on taking stuff to attack you know, infections and all mm -hmm. the rest of it, that's really allopathic. What that means is you're treating something. We're really big on what's called vitalism, which means you keep the inside part of the body really amplified. You keep the inside body part of the body working really well so that it then does what it needs to do to fight off infection and do all the rest of it. So things that support the inner workings of the body mm -hmm. um, on a regular basis, but especially don't, mi don't miss this stuff when your kids are under the weather, yeah. is number one is vitamin D. 
right? So vitamin D can come in a liquid form. It's something that you can give your kids. Um, they don't even really, you know, uh, there's no bad taste or anything. You mm -hmm. just like open your mouth and you put a couple drops under their tongue. Typically one drop is a thousand units and you can supplement your kids about 35 to 40 international units per pound of body weight per day. So if you had a kid who was 50 pounds, you could literally give them, you know, 2000 international units per day, no problem whatsoever. This is an immune system supporter and it's also been shown in studies that vitamin D is a key element of the immune system being able to recognize pathogenic cells. So Which when you awesome. support with when you support with vitamin D, you're not attacking the bacteria the bacteria or the virus apparently I'm you know <laughs> got my puberty voice going here. <laughs> Um, but you you are supporting your immune system to go ahead and, and attack that. Do you want to talk about zinc and that study from Cornell University? That yes. Yeah. So zinc is one that we've definitely starting started to add. Um, it is a deficiency that they're showing up, just like vitamin D is one. Um, and we're not huge on vitamins on a regular basis, I would say. We try oh. to get it all through our food and nutrition. Nice. Um, but when we do supplement, you know, vitamin D is a big one because in the winter months we're not getting it. And that's the same as zinc. We're finding that a lot of the food sources are depleted in zinc um, so we're not getting as much zinc and zinc is super important for the gut flora and right now I think everybody's realizing that gut flora is as a has become very recognized as a big portion of your immune system okay um, and that zinc is going to actually support the gut flora and so they're showing that if you have a deficiency in zinc it actually alters and depletes the, the good bacteria that is in your stomach and your gut Okay, and so zinc is an important one. I want you to recognize too, though, you don't want to do a high dose zinc because it can actually cause some some, some tummy troubles. So um, we usually stick with a 15 milligram, I believe it is, uh, a zinc product, um, and that's what we supplement. Yeah. Good and for the gut, good for the gut flora, and good for the immune system. Yeah, so on that note of gut flora, we typically also would, on a regular basis, and especially when mm -hmm. under the weather, so Yes, this with is one we do supplement pretty much all the time. Yeah, so this is called a probiotic. Probiotic is the good bacteria that your body has naturally inside of its digestive and, and gut flora system, which is a huge part of how your body moderates an immune response, and it also works to keep things like yeast and bad bacteria in check. This is the Secret stuff part. that is in massive jeopardy when you choose to take an antibiotic. So when you take an antibiotic, it kills all the bacteria, the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, which is why you're so susceptible after you take an antibiotic to reinfect, to get reinfected. This is why we say an antibiotic is not your best choice. You need to get the body to heal itself. This is the core tenant of people who are really, really healthy, is getting the body to heal itself. So a probiotic should be you know, something that you're, you're adding in. You can get this from other food sources even. Um, you know, I'm not really big on you know, the whole promotion through the commercials of just yogurt you know, being yeah. good for this because most of that yogurt's full of sugar and all that other kind of stuff that's gonna, gonna you help. You find to, all these in yeah. fermented foods. Yeah, so you find these in things like sauerkraut, pickles, kefir, um, Kombucha. Kombucha is yeah, a big one. Right. Yeah. So, and kids will love kombucha. Our kids love drinking kombucha. So, a probiotic is awesome to help support your body in its ability to heal itself. I see we got a, a ton of people on here. Ask some questions, pop up some things, create some dialogue here. We'd love to be able to help you guys as much as we can. Right. Um, and then the last one here that's on here is uh, vitamin C. Vitamin C is a super immune system supporter in terms of getting the body to be able to heal itself. So vitamin C is super, it's, I'm not gonna say impossible, it's super hard to become toxic on it. If your body has absorbed enough vitamin C, the way you'll know that is your <laughs> bowels will get really loose. Yeah. So we would say that you can supplement vitamin C to the point where your bowels get loose, and then you know that you've had enough and you can start to back it down. This is super easy to get into kids, you can get it in powdered form, you can get it in all kinds of different ways. So in, in terms of that, that would be stuff that you would do to support your immune system so that your body, the host, strengthens up and attacks what's going on and what's struggling. That's not just for when your kids have a sore throat and when they're sick. That's for how, how your kids are gonna heal and deal with cancerous cells inside of their body. It's how your kids are gonna um, fight off every single type of, of thing that their body encounters all the time. Keeping that immune system primed and pumped is key. So strategies, number one, we talked about chiropractic. Number two, and that's for nerve system, healthy function of the nerve system, scientifically proven, 
uh, study after study, and the most recent one shows a 139% increase in IgA um, to, to be able to help with um, your body fighting things off. Strategy two, eliminate two. sugar. Eliminate right? sugar, yep. Sugar suppresses immune system and sugar feeds sickness. Strategy three, rest. Hydrate and get rest. Super key. And then strategy number four, support the immune system with good foods, supplements, that sort of stuff, um, and go forward. So in terms of things, you guys, please ask questions. We'll get back to you within the next 15, 20 minutes as far mm -hmm. as things go. Um, post that, share that. There are so many kids out there getting doped up on excessive antibiotics that aren't healing properly. Their immune systems are now vulnerable, especially when they've taken the mm -hmm. antibiotic. The next four to seven days afterwards, the likelihood of reinfection is huge. Right. So make sure, hey, here he is right here. Come here, buddy. Yeah. Come here, just in time. <laughs> say hi. Look, say hi. <laughs> yeah, you're shy, right? So this is Reese. He's home today. Wave, buddy. You say Come hi. On, Mr. <laughs> Wave. So Reese is at home resting, healing, hydrating, doing what he needs to do, and your body's going to heal, right? Put yeah. your fist in the air and say, Woo, I'm gonna heal. <laughs> That's the and don't the forget air. the value of a good old fashioned hug. Yes. A little extra love goes a long way for that healing. Yeah. <laughs> say bye, guys. Say bye. Say bye. bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right, love you guys. We'll see you Have soon. Have a good day.